sorry, I got carried away. I must look a fright. Fine. What happened to you? My car broke down. I was walking for help when all of a sudden I started feeling all tingly. I don't remember anything after that. You must have been struck by lightning. We should get you to a hospital. And waste a beautiful night like this. Hi, this is Steve from Pixel Bump. Welcome to our new tutorial on how to get the Sin City look as seen in the film Sin City and the new Sin City, A Dame to Kill For. The look is very iconic and it's very dreamlike and graphic. It's very well suited for the type of material that Frank Miller produces. And it's a relatively easy look to set up here inside of After Effects. I'm gonna go through two of the shots from the little clip I showed earlier and we'll take apart how to do them and how to achieve that look for your own shots. So before we get started let's take a look at the source material. I did two pages from Frank Miller's book Sex and Violence and the two pages were a very attractive woman who ends up being an assassin and her and her male target. Here we see this nice long shot of her shivering in the rain the man runs up to her having just crashed his car, narrowly avoiding her on the road. She looks at him, embraces him, they kiss, they have a short little speech, and she delivers a line where we'll end our scene. Now, what they try to do in Sin City is do a direct translation of the comic book to the screen. And there are certain things that will not translate perfectly. There are certain things that we'll have to adjust. But we do want to try to follow in that philosophy of trying to show exactly the image as Frank Miller drew it. And the two shots that we'll be discussing are this main long panel here and the second panel where she turns and looks at the man who's running up to her. So for a shot like this, I decided the easiest thing to do would be to shoot Kazumi here on a green screen and shoot her horizontally. I turn the camera on its side, set the green screen on the back, put her up on an apple box so I could get as much of her on the green screen as possible. And then I repeated that exact same process for Eric's shot. Shot him horizontally, running in place towards the camera. And what we're going to do is take these shots that we now have a full body head to toe with as much resolution as we can get. By shooting it horizontally, we're able to get much more resolution than if we had shot her vertically. She was shot vertically, she'd fill a very small area of the frame. So this is going to give us a lot more resolution when we want to try to move the camera around in After Effects. So to get started, I'm just going to go through kind of my normal keying setup. So I'll come in here and create a garbage mat. And let me just put a couple extra points on it to get rid of some of this junk in the background on the on the bottom. That'll be good. And then I'm just going to do my normal keying procedure. I'm going to Reduce noise, auto profile, auto fine tune. I'm going to pull up Primat and I'm going to select my background color. And I'm just going to take as much of the green as I can in the background sampling. And then I'll switch over to the matte view and do my cleanup. So I'll clean out the background colors that I don't want and I'll come in and make sure I'm keeping the foreground colors that I do want and I want to try to be careful because I don't want to have too much noise here in the edges of the mat. We're starting to get a little crunchy but I think we'll be okay. Oop. There we go, that was too far. Now I know she's not going to move her feet too much, so what I'll do, 
I'll come over and just grab these points and bring them in a little bit. That way we can retain as much of the nice mat as possible. Then I'll come back to the comp and now I can take her, I can rotate her 90 degrees, and there we're gonna have a much nicer setup for our 3D camera. Now I've already gone ahead and done this setup on Eric Shots, and with Eric Shots, I actually had to do a little bit more with them because his feet, let me turn them on here for you, his feet actually went farther than below the green screen here, so I had to do a little roto brush on them and combine them up. But it was the exact same process you just saw me do with Kazumi Shot. And I didn't want to have to do both of them for you. So let's go ahead and get these guys set up in 3D space. Now, so I'm going to switch on their 3D layers and then I'm going to position them. Now I'm going to take Eric's and I'm going to push him back a pretty good ways, about 10,000 units back. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new camera. And I'll just go ahead and make this a 50 millimeter camera. I'll enable depth of field. I'll say OK. Move my camera to the top. And now I've got them both in a 3D space. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit here because I'd like to start with Kazumi a little more in frame here. And I'll go ahead, bring up my position and my point of interest, and I'll set a couple keyframes. Then I'll come down to the end and we'll just track down her body until we get to the bottom of her mat. I'm going to take Eric's position and bring him right here, right behind her. There we go. And I'll set a keyframe at the beginning of his layer here. And I'll set another keyframe here, maybe about 5,000. So let him get about halfway up. And you can see he's just, he's too high right now. So I'm going to click on the position and you'll see that both of my position keyframes have been highlighted, so now I can move them together. So when I move him horizontally in one, he'll stay moved horizontally in the other. And that should give us a little more, a, that'll give us an easier time of moving him around, because we won't have to adjust both keyframes simultaneously. I think I'll bring him a little closer, just so he feels like he's really catching up to her. And let's check out our beginning position here. Oh, I accidentally did both keyframes on the Z position. All right. So that's good for the moment. We won't really know until we have the rest of the scene in how this is really gonna look. And we may want to adjust a little more later. And if we look at our reference again, we have a heavy rain, we've got some sort of ground that they're on and a uh, wooden guardrail and a nice old 50s car in the background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down and I made a few assets. And the backgrounds and the looks of the films are a lot more filled out than the original comic in most cases. Sometimes it does get this graphic and simple, but most of the time they kind of up the ante. Again, when it translates, you don't want the film frame to be quite that bare. It doesn't look right. So they kind of did what I call the high-end game look. In the backgrounds, they don't look real. They don't look photo real, but they do look realistic enough that we'll buy it. And this whole thing, again, is very dreamlike, very graphic. So I call it the look of high-end games. And to that end, I went into Cinema 4D and I made myself a guardrail. Just a simple 
couple of cylinders with a wooden texture that have been offset and just made to look more like an interesting guardrail kind of shape. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and switch on its 3D layer, switch on its motion blur. And I'm going to push this back, let's say 11,000 units. So it's pretty far back there. And then I'll scale it up so that it'll fit here in our last frame. And I'll go ahead and position it down for a bit here. And then I'll bring in our ground layer. And very similarly, this was just something I made very quickly in 3D. It didn't have to be too high detail. It's going to be color corrected and shadowed and treated. And once it is, this is going to look really great as our ground layer. So again, I'll come into its position. And we used 11,000, so I'll do 10. 1,500 for its position and again scale it up until it's going to fit the end of our frame and bring it down somewhere around here maybe and we can go ahead and bring down our guardrail a little bit bring that down a little more there we go and the last element from the comic was the car and I went ahead and rendered out a nice little car model here. Now for all of these elements, you don't have to be using 3D elements. You could use pictures and rotoscope them out in Photoshop and then bring them in. I chose to go with 3D because that's very similar to how they've made all these elements for Sin City. So again, we'll go to our position, turn on its 3D layer, turn on its motion blur, and I'll go with 10,750. So it's in between the ground and the guardrail post. And then let's bring down its position. It's a little small, so I'll scale it up until I feel it's a good size. And let's go ahead and take that rail and bring it down a bit. That's looking pretty good. And let's see. So yeah, my fear was that now that we've pushed all this down, Eric is going to look a little high in his original approach. But I like pretty much where he is here. I'd like to move him over a little bit, just so I can see a little more of that front of the car. And I'm going to come back here to where he starts, and I'm just going to go ahead and bring him down. And maybe move him over this way a little bit so it looks like he's running more around the car and in to frame. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got most of our elements in here, but now here comes the part where we get to make some decisions as artists ourselves. The first decision I want to make to fill in this frame is to add a nice cloudy background. I got this background shot here off of video blocks and it's just a nice rainy lightning-y background. It's nothing too exciting but it's gonna make a great cloud background for our shot. So again I'll come in here I'll turn on the 3D I'll turn on the motion blur. We're a little short so I'm just gonna stretch it out a bit and I'll go ahead and turn on its frame blending so that way all the intermediary frames will be nice and smooth and we won't have any jumpy or blocky stuttery motion and then I'll go ahead come down to my last frame and since we've got everything pretty far let's go ahead and go 15,000 so we want this to be really far in the background and if I come back to the beginning let's scale it up just a little bit more so I'd like it to cover the whole shot. All right, so that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and just see how that camera move is working with our elements. All right, the motion of this is looking pretty nice. I'm enjoying a lot of it. And Eric does have a nice run forward motion, but we're just not seeing enough through her legs yet. So I'm going to come into my camera and I'm just going to zoom in a little more. 
so that we can see a little more through her legs. Bring that shot up. There we go. Now we can see a lot more of our background detail. We get our car in here a little nicer. We see Eric a lot clearer. I think that's going to look much nicer. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is come in and I'm going to make some trees for the background here. And I've got these nice big trees that I'll put in 3D and I will position them, let's say, to 12,500 frames back and I'll scale them up, scale this guy up and move him over. And then I'll just bring in a couple more trees. Let me just duplicate this a couple times. Five. And then I'll just Alt Replace so that way I don't have to scale or position them every time I bring in a new tree. And then I can just slide them over. And I'll try to make sure that none of them get right on top of those guardrails because I'd like there to be a little separation between the vertical lines happening. So I want to make sure that I have enough to really kind of cover up as much of that background as I can. So I'll duplicate, looks like maybe three more trees are going to be necessary. So I'll bring these guys over. Something like that. Okay, that's looking pretty sharp there. Let's go back to the beginning. And maybe they're a little too big. I don't think I want them to be quite that in frame at all times. So let me scale them down just a bit. And we'll come back to the end and make sure that their roots aren't showing. That looks better. That's nicer. I don't want them quite towering over everything. All right. And so these are the elements of the scene. And if we look, it looks nothing like what we want it to yet. Only Eric is in black and white already. And let's go ahead and get all of the other elements to start matching up. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to come down here and throw a tint on most of these elements. I'm going to throw it on the grass, and then I'm going to copy it, put it on the guardrail, the trees, and our background video. I'll just paste it right on top. And we're getting there pretty quick. That's going to get us a good portion of the way. But what I'd like to do is come back here and add some more contrast to the background. And you can either use a curves or a level, whichever one you really like. I kind of prefer the curves because I just feel it's a little more controllable. Sometimes I feel the levels are just a little more brute forcey. And I'm starting to see a lot of noise there. So I'm going to throw a reduced noise at the beginning of this as well. Auto profile, auto fine tune, and apply. And there we go, it smooths that out really nicely. And let's come back down here to the bottom. And I think I'll grab that curves adjustment and I'm gonna apply it to the grass. And I'm gonna apply it to all my trees. Just wanna darken them up a little, oh, it's too much. So let's go ahead and add it to one tree and we'll refine it a little bit. There we go. So I want them to be darkened, but I don't want them to fall off completely to black. As soon as we throw a little depth of field on this, these guys are all gonna disappear pretty quick. Now the car is just a little too, a little too present and has a little too much color in it. And what we wanna do is really just keep that blue. So I'm gonna come in here to a hue saturation and I'm gonna drop the reds, drop the yellows, drop the greens, and drop the magentas out of it. So now it only has the blue left. If I solo it, 
you'll see now it is just a blue, black, and white car. And I'll go to my blues even. And I'm just going to desaturate them a little bit. Same with the cyans. I just want to bring it down. It's a little too intense for me right now. There we go. That's much nicer. Okay, so we've got our background color corrected, but Kazumi is still in full color. Well, we're going to handle her color correction very similarly to how we handled the car. I'll drop on a hue saturation, and I'm going to come into my reds and just go negative 100. Get rid of them completely. Go into my yellows, do the exact same thing, and grab my greens and do the exact same thing. So now she's looking pretty nicely black and white, but what we did was kept all that nice blue color in the stockings. So we've removed the color from the rest of her and left it just in that one area, which is going to match nicely to this shot where her stockings stayed nice and blue. Now let's go ahead and add our rain. And to do that, I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a rain layer. And I'm going to go to oops, Particle World. Let me solo this. And you can see it's already using the camera object that we have. So what I'll do is come in here and I'm going to drop the birth rate down to one for now. I'm going to make the producer a zero in the Y. I'm going to stretch out its X radius until it's big enough to drop completely down. I'm going to come into physics. I'm going to turn off velocity but I'm going to keep my gravity on and that's going to give us particles that should just drop straight down the whole time. And then I'm going to take my producer and I'm just going to bring him up until he's out of camera frame here at the beginning. And there we go. So that's looking pretty good. But I want the rain to be there from the beginning, so I'll just move my layer over and pull out the end, and that'll keep us with rain particles the entire time. When they get down here, they seem to be dying off. So I'm going to go ahead and keep their longevity up. And I'll come into the particle color, and I'll just start with white, and I'll end at a nice light gray. And that's going to work for the beginning. All right. And now I can just add these on top. And they look horrible, <laughs> just as they should. They should look horrible right now. Uh, what we want to do is come in here. Let's reduce their opacity a bit. And let's go ahead and make these ones the ones behind Kazumi. So they'll be falling there. And what I'll do for these ones is I will add a little camera blur to them. This is one of the times where I'm really going to not use fast blur a lot. I'm going to use the camera blur, so I'd like it to have a more cinematic fall off so it'll match our depth of field a little better. There we go. Something like, yeah, five is pretty good. Drop them down to 40, and that'll be a nice background layer of rain. But it's falling straight down. And here again, we've got a little more angle to our raindrops. So I'm going to come over and I'm just going to scale this guy up a little bit. And I'm just going to rotate it until I have more of an angle on my rain. And I'll scale him up a little more, make sure that it's all filling. There we go. That's better. 
And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to duplicate this guy, I'm going to bring it to the foreground. I'm going to turn off my camera blur for a moment, or maybe just reduce it down to something much less. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale this guy up a bit more and probably drop its birth rate down. And there we go. Now we're starting to get this nice graphic-y, straight-lined look, which is very similar to what we see in the comics. So let's go ahead and add just a couple more flourishes here. The big one I want to add is a vignette. So I'd like to make this feel a little more lit, as if somebody came out there with some lights. And I'm going to put it behind the Kazumi layer, but in front of everything else. And let's go ahead and grab our ellipse mask, do something like this. And we'll subtract it and then feather it out a whole bunch, maybe 400 pixels. That's pretty good. And then we'll just reduce it, reduce its opacity to maybe 60, maybe 75, 80. There we go. That way we're focusing the eye on this area here in the center and not so much on the areas around it. And I think what I'd like to do is actually duplicate my rain layer one more time drop it behind Eric, and in this one, I'm going to take that producer and I'm going to move it back just a little bit. Let's go to the top, make sure we didn't just cut ourselves off, which we did. So let's take it in Y, bring it up, and I'll take the mid-ground layer, bring it down to maybe 0.7, and the background layer maybe down to 0.5. This way we just have a nice amount of depth to that effect. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I like the motion. I like a lot of the color grading. I don't like the rain. It's a little too heavy right now. And I mean just in its look in general. So I'm just going to come down and I'm going to drop everybody down to like more of a 20. There we go. That's much better. So now we feel like there's rain and it's not distractingly overbearing. So the last thing I want to do is add some depth of field to this shot. And you could use the After Effects camera, but I've never been a huge fan of it personally. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a lens blur to our foreground woman layer to Kazumi. And then I'm going to go ahead and add an adjustment layer below her, right under the vignette, oops right under the vignette. And what I'll do is I'll kind of keyframe these together. Let's go ahead and add that to our layer. And we'll zero this out for now until we figure out where we're gonna want this to come in. So somewhere around here, we should start racking our focus, maybe about frame 100. So I will Click on our foreground layer here, come down to our lens blur, and then I'll come down here, and let's go ahead, that's too blurry, maybe a 20 for the beginning there, or a 15, there we go, something more like that, and come down to where we start to see Eric completely somewhere down here, and I'll reduce the blur here, and I will up the blur here. 
and then when I come all the way down, that looks really nice. Okay, but I think I'm gonna actually add one more blur behind Eric's layers. And on its keyframes, I'm not gonna take it down to zero here. So I'd like it to stay just a little out of focus. There we go. Okay, so that's looking really nice. The image looks really pretty there. And it looks really pretty here. I can see we've got a little cleanup to do on Kazumi's key. So let's come in and pull those colors out. And while we're here, let's go ahead and clean up some of this crunchiness that's happening. And to do that, I'll just defocus my mat a little bit. And that should take care of a lot of that crunchiness. All right, stepping through, that looks pretty good. The only thing that we're missing from our original comic panel is some smoke coming off the engine. And to get that smoke, I'm just going to grab a Video Copilot smoke asset. I'm going to come down here and attach it to my car. Then I'll switch on its layers. And then I'll just zero them out. So now it should be right where the car is. I can pop it right above the hood and it should track very nicely with the car. And just give us that nice little bit of smoke as if the car has just hit the guardrail. So let's go ahead and take a look at this shot and see if we're done. Okay, I think this looks really good. I think the only thing I want to change at this point is to play with my vignette a little bit. Like maybe pull it in a little more on the sides and the bottom just to keep that focus nicely on Eric in the background. But that's it. I think that's our first shot. So for our second shot, we're going to use this one of Kazumi turning and looking in camera. One thing I did do is spray down the actors with water, which was not only fun to do, but when we add the rain later, it just really gives you a nice impression that they're in the rain while at the same time, most of them is dry. So again, it just adds to that very dreamlike state that the film lives in. So I'm gonna come in and, oops. I'm gonna come in and just do my usual key setup real quick. So I'll throw on a reduced noise, I'll auto profile, I'll auto fine tune. I'm going to add primat and I'll select my background and then I'll come into my mat I'll clean it up clean that background up as best I can here so see a little bit of junk here on this side there we go and I think my foreground actually looks pretty good so I think we're okay there so now I'll come back here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw on the spill killer. And unlike the last shot, we're gonna bring some of this color back a little later because the character has these piercing blue eyes. And one of the fun things they do in the film is play with how much color they bring in at certain emotional moments. And I think we're gonna bring up her color, make her eyes blue and bring in just a little bit of the skin tone. So to do that, I wanna make sure I don't have any extra green in there. So that's looking pretty good. Now, since I've already made the rain layers, I don't see any reason not to just come back here and steal a lot of the stuff I've already made. No need to make this twice. Now, the one thing I wanna do is rotate it the opposite direction. So our screen direction, again, must be consistent. And we can already see we've lost a little bit of the key here. I want to come back, 
make sure that key is nice and cleaned up. All right, good. And since I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and steal myself some trees. I don't know how many I'm gonna need. I'll just grab the first five that we did before. I'm gonna drop them on. I'm gonna turn off their 3D layers. I'm gonna scale them back down, or maybe not. Maybe I'm not gonna scale them back down. Maybe I should put them back here first and see what I'm dealing with. And yeah, I'm gonna need to scale them back down. Those, those are overly large right now. They still are supposed to be fairly in back of her. So maybe 75%. And I'll come in and just start positioning these guys. I don't know if I'm gonna need all five, but better to have and not need than need them and not have them. So let's go ahead and make sure all those trunks are nicely positioned around her so we get a nice bit of density in this forest. Okay. And as far as our background layer goes, I think that's about all we're gonna need. So I'm gonna come in here, add another blur layer just below my rain, and I'm gonna grab another camera lens blur. And for this one, we're gonna go a bit higher this should be a nice close-up shot. So our background should be pretty out of focus. Let's go ahead, move these down just a little bit. Let's create a nice, interesting background. And I'm gonna grab, there we go. But I don't want the exact same shape I used last time. What I think might be fun this time is to kind of recreate something they used to do in old noirish films a little bit. Some of the German expressionism is just kind of create this pool of light. There we go. Just gives that background a little more feeling of being lit. And let's go ahead and just bring this guy down a bit. We don't want to lose everything in there but we definitely want a nice little bright area. Okay, now we have to figure out where we're gonna have that lighting, that color change happen. So I think right around here where we notice that she's really seen the man run up to her, up to about here, where she really settles into her helpless look. That's where we'll bring our color up will make it suggestive of the fact that she's trying to seduce this man. So what we'll do is come in, grab our hue saturation again, and we'll come into our reds, drop those, whoop, drop those completely out, come into our yellows, drop those completely out, and let's go ahead and take a curves adjustment here maybe. So I'd like to see a little more contrast in her. That's one of the big things. Oops. One of the big things about black and white is the whites are really bright and the blacks are really dark. And you have less of that middle tone gray. That looks much nicer. That gives you a much stronger black and white look. But because now we've color corrected with curves, I don't want to use the same exact one to bring her color back in. So I'm going to duplicate this guy, remove its curves adjustment, and let's go ahead and reset this. And we'll just bring our master saturation down a little bit. And what I think we might want to do, looks like we definitely have a little more cleanup on our key. Let's go ahead and get it. We're definitely getting a little bit in it. So let's come in and just defocus our mats just a little bit. Let's kind of clean that up. There we go. Very nice. Not enough that we're losing our hair completely, but definitely cleans that up. Now, I think we're just a little too blank in that background. 
So I'm going to come in, I'm going to grab my background layer, and just throw it over the top. There we go. That's a much nicer image. That helps a lot. Just turn off its 3D. Oops. And we'll scale, we'll just reset its transformation positions. There we go. Just a little more interest in the background now. So what I'll do is I will take my layer and just ramp the opacity down. Oops, accidentally hit solo. So this way, that color will come in really nicely. Oh, I went to 100%, I think maybe something more like 60, possibly. There we go. Just a little color. There we go. Now the last thing we have to deal with are the eyes. And that's going to be a really simple track because her eyes have these beautiful white highlights in them. So I'm going to come in and create a tracker. I left and duplicate it and call this one eye right. I know I don't care about them until they're up to this point. So I'll grab one of my layers, double click on it to go into the layer mode, and then I will grab my tracker. And I'm gonna track the motion here on this eye, right there, right on that nice white highlight. And I'll make sure that I've got my left eye null as my target, and I'll go ahead and track forwards. Very nice. And I'll apply my motion, and then we'll come back, track motion again, and we'll do the other eye. Right on that white highlight. And I'll make sure that my right is the target. And I will, oops. And I'll go ahead and track forward again. And apply. All right, so now I've got two trackers track perfectly to those eyes. So now the great thing about having them tracked is I can come in here and let's just solo her layers for a moment. And I can create an adjustment layer. I'll call this one I left. Let's close out those. And I'll bring this up just there. I'll leave it, yeah, leave it right there. And I'm gonna come in I think I'll just create a custom shape for this. I'll come in pretty close, so that way I make sure I really follow the eye shape well. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to come back and we create a second shape. Right along here. Let's round that out just a little bit. This is going to be her pupil. And what I'll do is I will just subtract from the top one and I'll feather them both out maybe five pixels. And then what I can do is grab a tint effect, drop it onto that. Let's zoom back in so we can see what we're doing here. And in the blacks, I'm going to come in and make that a nice pale blue. And let's find a good transfer mode here. I think screen is going to look pretty nice. So we want that to really be a piercing blue. And I think 
think we want to fix our mat up just a little bit. Oops. Right here. We're losing a little too much. And let's bring them in just a little bit. Don't want it to be too crazy. There we go. And now that I have that set up, I can come in, duplicate it, call this layer I write, and I will delete those two masks, turn off my effect for a moment. I'll come in, trace this eye. And just the same thing, we just want to make sure we get the shape really nicely. And then we'll create our secondary shape here in the center. Unfortunately, on this side, we don't have any color guiding us, so we're just going to have to kind of guesstimate and then adjust as necessary. And we'll go ahead, try the same settings here. We'll go with a five pixel blur or five pixel feather. And we'll bring in this expansion just a little bit. Then I can turn this color back on. Set that guy to subtract. Now if I pull back, I think that pupil needs to move over just a little bit. It's a little too centered. She doesn't look like she's looking at the same direction with both eyes. There we go. That'll probably be better. Yeah. All right. So let me take these two guys, bring their layer in. And I'm going to do the same effect with them. I'm going to just start them off here at zero. And at the end, oops, I did not attach my eye mats here. So let me just quickly attach those to each one of their trackers. And now we have these very piercing blue eyes on our model. And I think maybe 100% is just a little too high. I want them to be piercing, but I don't want them to be completely distracting. So 80%, that looks much nicer. So let's go ahead and turn off all of our effects. Let's hide our nulls. And let's take a look at this shot. Okay, that's looking really nice. I think the only thing I want to fix right now is we can see Kazumi does blink right here and our eyes do not. So let's go ahead and fix that. I will grab my masks. I'll set a keyframe for them here. And then let's just step forward a few frames. Go, set a keyframe when they come back to where they're supposed to be. And let's go ahead and just solo those layers so we can work a little faster. And just have to clean up a couple of frames here. So not a huge deal. Oops. Let's go ahead and lock our pupils because the pupils should actually be fine. What we want to fix is here with with the colored portion of the eye. Let's go ahead and bring this down, down, that down, and same thing here. Just bring it down, down, and down guy down. There we go. Now let's do the other eye. And here, same thing, same exact procedure. Let's bring down all of our points. Let's 
until they're below the eyelid. There we go. Just let me copy and copy and paste that frame. Just much closer there. Okay. So let's just preview that and see how that looks. That works much better. Okay. So let's go ahead and check out our shot again. And there you have it. That is how a lot of Sin City was done. Now they do some more advanced things with 3D camera tracking, but almost every other process is exactly the same as this. So, all right, and that about brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you've learned something you can use in your work. If you have any questions, please hit me up on Twitter or Facebook or in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Go and create.